County program at Lake Trail Elementary School. That will be on your agenda, and again, there is something here to read for that. We're also going to approve a memorandum of understanding between Greater Latrobe School District and the Greater Latrobe Education Association for the 21-22 school year. Um, those will all be agenda items. The next item is to approve an tuition student from Gary Area School District as listed. Um, the next one is to approve a youth survey, and we've done this in the past, PAYS, distribution for the 21-22 school year that must be approved by the board in order to do that. So that will be on your agenda for approval. The next one is to approve an elementary instruction time template for the 21-22 school year. And there is an attachment there. Would anyone like to speak about that? I could speak about that. We okay. um, are required to have an emergency, emergency instructional time template if for some reason we would need to go virtual um, with the pandemic or if we would have to modify schedules and that had been submitted and it needs to be board approved. Okay, thank you. Um, and lastly, we will be approving an inner site professional therapy services agreement for the 21-22 school year. And again, there is an informational item there for you to read. Unless anyone has questions, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. and Mrs. President. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed the resolution. I'm so sorry. Um, we will, we will, be, I vote, I, um, I, ask you to adopt resolution number 04 to approve the AFS Intercultural Programs International Youth Exchange Organization and Foreign Exchange Student for 21-22 and we will be having a, a foreign exchange student from Italy. So moved on that resolution. Yes, 
thank you. There's a summary of the WIU board meeting minutes from July. Um, we did, um, I'm sorry, I think it's, it's June. We did not meet in July. Uh, um, and those are for you to read. And the next WIU committee meeting will be next Tuesday, August 24th, in the Fort Lincoln Air Room. Thank you. Uh, further and stronger in the future. 
So thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Luke Schaefer. Um, I was born and raised in Lynchhope. I'm super excited to be in this position. So I want to thank you all for that. And uh, yeah, I'm just proud to be here uh, to give back to the community that made me the man that I am today. So uh, I appreciate it and I'm, I'm ready to get to work.
32BJ, Local Union 32BJ. That has been added to the agenda and it will be, um, there will be a resolution to approve that next week. Thank you very much for pointing that out to me. I'd ask the board to please move on to resolution number 11 to approve support personnel appointments, supplemental positions, and salaries for those positions for the 2021-22 school year. Almost all the time yeah. with everybody else. A lot. And it, you know, it's, it's actually it's interesting. 
I feel like over the last five years, we have more and more people who do not have education degrees coming to us to be emergency certified to, to be substitute not really fair on that. They're fine. We, we, we meet with them, answer any questions they might have. Um, you know, we're, we're careful to interview them and see what their background is. But for the most part, they're not doing it for money. They're doing it because they have legitimate interest, they have time, and they want to be involved in our schools. Basically, what I thought was that they were doing because they wanted to do it. Right. Well, look at raising the rate is going to hurt them. That's for sure. We will get you that exact number. I will make a note of it. Um, Thank you. Absolutely. Students in grades K through 6, Monday the 30th, and grades 7th and 9th. Um, if, excuse me, August 30th, 2021, grades kindergarten through 6, 7, and 9, and all August 31st, all grades except kindergarten. Kindergarten does not begin until September 1st. Just uh, to note, the 7th grade students do attend, and those individual students who are web leaders in 8th grade attend on August 30th, and that is the same for ninth grade students attend on August 30th, and web leaders from grades 10 through 12 attend on the 30th as well. Our back to school nights are listed as August 25th, 6 to 8 p.m. for grades 1 through 5, and August 26th. 6 to 8 p.m. for 2, 4, and 6 grades. Kindergarten meet and greet, August 24th, 4 to 6 p.m., and that is by appointment with the, the student's kindergarten teacher. Our junior and senior high school open house will occur September 8th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m., and next Tuesday we will have our regular board meeting at 7.30 p.m., and followed in September by our committee the whole meeting on the 14th and our regular board meeting on the 21st. Thank you. Up here in visitors part two, if this is where anyone in the audience can come forward with any concerns. Um, again, please state your name and address and when you step to the podium and there is a five minute time. Seeing no one. I move the adoption of resolution. Oh, sorry. So I have to slow to get up. John Palmer, seven high acres, circle in Greensburg. Uh, I just wanted to, I know Dr. Tepper, you said at the opening that the Health and Safety Committee was going to be meeting again this Friday. Uh, can we uh, imply then or, or infer from that that there might be another vote on that plan at the board meeting next week? There possibly could be another vote if the, if the uh, plan changes. And if there is, and if the plan changes, it would be posted on our district website with our agenda Monday afternoon prior to the meeting. Thank you. And then, uh, you know, I was here at the, the last meeting, as you know. I just want to reiterate that, you know, my opinion is irrelevant, actually. It's positions, I think, that matter. But I really implore you to reconsider the mask uh, guidance, especially for elementary school children that don't have a choice to be vaccinated, uh, as well as the cafeteria plan. I, I truly believe that. Uh, the kids are being put uh, at risk uh, because adults are safe. Uh, the the uh, American Society of Pediatrics has been clear. CDC has been clear. The Department of Education has been clear. The Department of uh, Health and Safety of Pennsylvania has been clear. UPMC has made a recommendation. I think overwhelmingly, you know, the experts are telling us what to do. And I really hope that that's taken to heart. Uh, the question, so that's just a, a comment. The question I have, though, is the, you mentioned there's a committee. Uh, does that committee have pediatricians or physicians on it? The committee that I'm talking about that will be meeting, uh, Dr. Zorch is the chair of that committee, but it is comprised of board members. However, I can assure you, uh, personally, myself, I've already reached out to physicians that were on our health and safety committee last year through this time. So, um, but this will be the board committee, health and safety committee on, my, on Friday. But we do have input from other physicians as well and pediatricians. Now, what, can you kind of summarize what their feedback has been? At this point in time, they were recommending face coverings for students kindergarten through 12. Okay, thank you. I'm a community health deputy 
and also uh, I live in 258 Margaret Road, Metro. Um, I was part of the Greater Metro School District, but sadly because of COVID, I changed my children, and I hope to come back. But I hope to see those um, uh, guidelines and in, in place that I, as a community of deputy, will feel safe to come back with my children. So. Uh, I just would like to talk about what I received from the Department of Health. And just the last three days, there is a total of 5,951 new cases um, and 1,115 patients hospitalized, 301 patients in the intensive care unit. Uh, cases are racing. Um, Delta, the Delta variant is here. And in many other countries abroad, it's even chatting the, the possibility to enter to the country. Um, and, uh, for example, here we have about, uh, it's a, and I was 15, I was 14 a Monday, I was 16, there was 5,951 additional positive COVID cases. Um, and some uh, individuals hospitalized, I don't want to go with too many details. I, I would be happy to, give this information if I have an email, I haven't found an email to, to what person that I can talk in and give this information, it just is a general information that is sent to the board. So if I could have a, an email, I would extremely appreciate that. Um, about 53% of the population is vaccinated. We still have 47% uh, uh, of the population that needs to be vaccinated. At least we will, will we appreciate as a, a community property working with the Neighborhood Resilience Project and the Familia and Comunidad Westmoreland, um, being part of the um, a collaborative vaccine, the community vaccine collaborative that will raise those uh, vaccine vaccinations so we have a safe country and a safe state also. Um, I have to information that I would be very happy to share with you. Uh, we provide, um, because of the, uh, through the speakers for all, we provide talks, we provide training to the staff, to the uh, administrative people, to the students. We can do things very fun for the children also. I will I truly appreciate that you open the door for us. We are a group of, uh, of, of uh, people research from the University of Pittsburgh. We, we have a grant, so we offer this free of cost for everybody that opens the door for us. Um, we have a immunologist, sorry my English is not my first language, epidemiologists, a pediatricians. We have a team of science, science, uh, scientific people that will extremely appreciate to work with you so we can um, uh, uh, decrease the amount of cases uh, that are positive cases, people hospitalized and people that have died. Um, so it's just a matter of I can pass this, I don't know if we will And also as a community, I would extremely also appreciate that we can bring mobile units for uh, vaccination. We really want to work with you, but we need that you open the door to us also. I would like to give that information to Jerry, our board secretary, and she'll make sure all Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Ditch, and we actually just moved into um, this district, and we're really excited about it. And I would like to say that I have four children, kindergarten, um, fourth grade, I'm sorry, fifth grade, third grade, and sixth grade. Um, and one of their biggest questions was to me this year was, Mom, are they going to mandate masks? And that's why I'm here tonight, because I told them that Greater Lake Chubb School District stood up for parents' rights for their children, and that they were not going to mandate them. And I want to applaud you guys and encourage you to stay strong on what you guys have already decided on because there is an army of parents that back you on that. I understand other people might have other opinions on that. However, I would like to tell you that my sixth grade child 
who is very sensory, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I had to pull him out of the school district last year and put him into PA cyber, which I'm sorry to use lack of better words, was a joke, okay? He was sat behind a screen and did not learn a thing because of a mask. We are talking about a real virus. I understand that, but there is a 98% survival rate. And I'm not discounting anybody who might have lost a loved one. My heart goes out to them. I pray for them. I am just asking you guys to please stay strong and to not have government overreach and to not have even school overreach in that regard, to allow it to be the parent's decision to mask their child or not, because there are children that, that are being highly affected by being muzzled all day. My son in particular was one of them. And I just, I just needed to tell you guys that because I am proud that you guys are allowing it to be optional. And hearing that there is going to be another discussion, there should no be no further discussion. It is the parent's decision, the parent's choice. If masks work so well, what are they afraid of? Mask your child then. Mm -hmm. Don't put my child into a restriction. Thank you. They want case counts so they can scare people. We already know it's there. 
We don't need the numbers. We don't need the dashboards. We don't need it. I forgot my other thought. Uh, hey, but sincerely, thanks again. Whether you agree with anything I'm saying about the, the COVID stuff, I know it's contentious. It's very polit political. I get it. But thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. For those of you who want to put a filthy mask on my kid, 
Where were you two years ago? Where were you three years ago? Four years ago? Whenever we had flu outbreaks? Why wouldn't you want to put masks on your kids then? We have had COVID around for 18 months now. There has been as many kids die with COVID, not of COVID, with COVID, as a normal severe flu season for the 12 months. So in 18 months, we've had that many deaths with COVID. I want to stress that. Not all of them have died from COVID. But now you want my kid to wear a filthy mask for another year? It's ridiculous. There's, there's no evidence that this Delta variant has any higher hospitalization rates for children than the other, any of the other variants. Yes, it is more contagious and more kids will get it. But there is no evidence that it's going to cause more kids to be in the hospital. Um, everybody in the community, all the parents, all the teachers, have either had COVID, had the vaccine, or have been given the opportunity to have the vaccine. There's no reason why parents' fears should be in the way of our kids' education and our kids' freedom. Um, I'm in the nuclear industry. Before I go work at a nuclear power plant, I have to take a test called the MMPI test. It's a test for whether you're mentally fit to work in the nuclear industry. One of those tests, well, a lot of those questions are geared around whether you are agoraphobic and a hypochondriac. I think we have, a, as a society, are reaching the point where we have this mass mental issue where everybody is afraid. We're all afraid that we're going to die. You know what? We're all going to die. We all know that. But we shouldn't use our irrational fears and put them on our kids, make our kids suffer because those parents are afraid or the grandparents are afraid. Go get your shot. Go get your second shot. Now you can go get a third shot here coming up soon if you really want one. I, I just don't get it. You know, if you want to, if you want to mask your kids, go ahead. But don't put that on my kids. Thank you. Because when, when it goes bad, the other ones are going to be standing there 
uh, helping us and anything we can do to not uh, force uh, a stress on that infrastructure that we have, uh, I think would be a good thing. So uh, that's all I want to say. Yes, I would just like to clarify. I know uh, Dr. Cuttrell, who, Cuttrell, who uh, came up. Um, if students are quarantined, and I don't know if this was a misunderstanding, but they would be permitted to participate in online instruction if they're quarantined. So I just wanted to. I know you said who is doing the online instruction? Is it their, their teacher? teacher? Yes. Okay, so that's like assuming like the whole class is quarantined. No. So it's streaming like last year. If a student, yes, if a student is quarantined, they will be permitted to be online with their classmates, with their teacher. Okay. We are not permitting on and off, on and off, but if we or a parent has identified that their child needs to be quarantined by the medical professor, professional who told them that, we will have that teacher do a Google invite for that child to be permitted to participate in instruction. Okay, thank you for that. Absolutely. Anyone else? Okay, now we move for adoption of 